thanks for checking this out. I'm Ron. Now, if you've uh, been kind enough to check out my channel before, you know that it's mostly about Native American flute playing, and it will continue to be mostly about Native American flute playing. Uh, but you might also have noticed that I've been gone for a while. I haven't posted anything uh, really this year, and uh, that's because of a music project that I've been involved with that because of the size of it and the deadlines involved, it really required my full attention. I didn't have time for making things like uh, YouTube videos while this was going on, but that project is to a place now where I can start doing some other things, and so I'd like to share a bit about that project. So this is the first uh, in a series of, maybe you could think of them as like backstory vlogs uh, about this project and uh, how and why I ended up turning one of my three minute solo native flute songs into a great big 20 minute solo piece for concert piano. Now, along the way, we're going to uh, look at a, a number of different things. We'll look at some of the special places and my memories of those places that helped guide the piece. Uh, we'll look at some of my favorite indigenous poets and painters whose works provided much needed inspiration now and then along the way. Uh, we'll look at uh, some of the uh, backstage prep uh, rehearsals as we get ready for concerts and workshops along the way. And then for all you fellow music geeks, uh, we'll even talk about some composition techniques and, and notation choices and maybe even a little bit of wrestling with music notation software to get things to look the way they needed to look. So what is this project? Early this year, I was contacted by my good friend and colleague, Paul Barnes. Paul is a brilliant classical pianist with a special interest in new music. He's also a Greek Orthodox cantor, been working together for a number of years at this point. Paul commissioned me to write a new piece for him, uh, an extended solo piano piece. He asked for something 17 to 20 minutes long that he could play during the 22-23 season. As we started on the project and, and got working on concepts and focus points and that kind of thing, the title of the piece eventually became The Way of Mountains and Desert. That title is inspired uh, by a poem from one of my favorite indigenous writers, Ophelia Zepeda. Uh, Zepeda is Thona Otham and is also one of the world's leading linguists. Now, originally, Paul thought he wouldn't need the score to start practicing this piece until well into the summer, but then he ended up booking some concerts for the summer. So the deadline got moved way up, and that's why you haven't seen me for a while. Like so much of my music, whether it ends up being for native flute or not, the way of mountains and desert is a music of place, and it started out as a solo flute song. I'll be talking about this a lot more in upcoming videos about this project. But for now, here's a short excerpt from the solo flute song, along with some really pretty desert pictures. Many thanks to all the wonderful photographers who make their work available on Unsplash. I'm filming this during the first week of July. Paul and I have been having rehearsals on the piece via Zoom for a couple of weeks. We recorded one of those rehearsals, so I'll be able to share some clips of that uh, in future videos as we go along. Right now, Paul is in Greece, and next Friday, July 8th, he will be doing kind of a preview performance of parts of the way of mountains and desert on a concert in Xanthi, Greece. He'll be giving the first full performance of the piece in Houston, Texas, towards the end of July. Now, coming up towards the end of September, Paul and I will be doing concerts together in Omaha and Lincoln, Nebraska. On those concerts, of course, Paul will be playing the new piece, but we'll also be doing my piece, Beads, for native flute and piano. And we'll also be doing some version of some parts of my Lunas Iagua pieces. Uh, those are structured improvisations using graphic scores, and they're actually solo versions of, uh, for native flute of some of those here on my channel. Just go to the Lunas Iagua playlist 
and you can check those out. For the Nebraska concerts, we will also be joined by bassist extraordinaire Danielle Meyer. The three of us uh, will be performing Paul's own arrangement of the second movement of Philip Glass's Second Piano Concerto. A bit of a mouthful. This is actually the piece that brought Paul and I together. Philip Glass wrote his Second Piano Concerto for Paul. The second movement has a beautiful solo part for Native American flute that originally was written for the great R.C. Nakai. Several years ago, there was a performance scheduled that Mr. Nakai was not available for, and he kindly recommended me to take his place. Paul and I have been working together regularly ever since. Now, after the Nebraska concerts, Paul will be performing The Way of Mountains and Deserts on concerts throughout the country during the season. And it looks like we'll be doing a concert together uh, again in New York City in May of 2023 to kind of round off the concert season. I'll keep you posted as things about that develop. As concert dates are confirmed, I will be posting them on my website, ronwarrenmusic.com. There's a link, of course, in the description box. And you can always keep checking back here because I'll be posting more videos about the Way of Mountains and Desert Project. Uh, we'll also, of course, be posting more videos about native flute playing and flute playing tips. And I have some exclusive music content planned for the channel as well. So if you're enjoying all of that, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It does help to get the word out and you'll be the first to know about new things that happen. I think that's about it for today. So thanks again for checking this out and I will see you again soon.